we've looked at everything around the research, the strategy, the analytics. Now it's time to do what I love is to talk about best practices with a practitioner. And for this, we have Dylan Umali, business manager, development manager rather at HyperMX as our moderator. And we have Jan Polak, who is head of ad monetization at Wooga. His colleagues, I did some research, call him the best account manager in the monetization sphere, hands down. No pressure there. So we are ready to rock and roll and learn best practices from you, Jan. Thank you. I guess I'll, I'll start here. Thanks, Peggy, for the introduction. And you know, it's great to be here at Pocket Gamer Connects Digital Number 8, yet another digital conference here. Um, so we're going to have a nice chat, uh, exciting, hopefully, to many of you on the line on all things ad monetization, as Peggy described. Um, Dylan Umali from HyperMex. And joining me is Jan Pollock, head of ad monetization, probably a familiar face to many of you. Uh, Jan, thanks for being on. How is everything with you? Thank you, Dylan, for inviting me. Nice to talk to you again. And yeah, looking forward for a session now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I guess let's just jump right into it. So you've been with Wugo for a few years now. Let's talk the audience through sort of what uh, a day in the life over there looks like for you. I mean, the kind of job as an ad monetization manager, be it like a head of or like a standard ad monetization manager, I think is very diverse because you can deal with so many aspects um, of, of the kind of job if you really want to make like a, a holistic um, uh, job. And uh, for me, communication is really key to that uh, role because you have to talk with a lot of people, be it like internally, be it externally to your ad network partners, to any other kind of service providers, analytic partners, et cetera, or big um internally like the game teams, developers, um, the game analysts, um, maybe your UA team to learn new things from the other side of the business and so on and so on. So there's a lot of things you have to talk about, you have to learn, you have to always yeah, know about. So communication is really key. Um, also being always approachable um, by anyone else from the company who has just kind of any kind of question about ad monetization, ad placement, any kind of weird ads they have seen and they want to escalate. And you have to look into it. So I think always being approached, but it's very important. Um, but then obviously also um, being always aware of the um, data, what's going on in your ad integrations, um, being able to track a lot of things and monitor all of that, understand what's going on. Um, and then, yeah, also help your game teams um, to see what kind of, kind of expansion you can do with ad integrations, how you can add more ad placements, how you can improve them, how you can tweak a little few things here and there. Um, and also how you can give your partners or your, your, your tech um, partners um, suggestions for improvements. Like if you have any kind of problem, if you want to have any kind of improvement from your tool, like a mediation or any other kind of tool you use, um, give them proactive feedback and just um, help each other to improve um, along the way. So there's a lot of different aspects. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It seems like uh, the job stays interesting, right? No day's the same. Seems like you have your pulse on a little bit of everything. Yeah, exactly. Perfect, perfect. Well, drilling into it even further, right? So Google has several evergreen titles like June's Journey. You know, how has your ad monetization strategy, you know, for titles like that change over the last few years? Yeah, actually June's Journey, um, I mean, it was, a, it was an amazing hit and we were really surprised also by how well it was doing over time. And um, especially also the ad monetization integrations there. Um, and we could we actually couldn't really um, improve anything in any new games yet because June Journey was actually the last game we released um, nearly four years ago. Um, but little spoiler here, we're gonna uh, release fairly soon, like until the end of the year, we're gonna release another new game um, from Booga, first few game. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to how that is working. Um, but in general, yeah, we definitely learned a lot of things in June's journey and also uh, managed to um, apply these kind of learnings from June's journey to the other games we had already out. So we also improved a lot of things in Paris Perry, for example, like another hidden object, um, evergreen title, um, which we just uh, took again and said, okay, at some point in the year, okay, let's just see what we have and how we can improve things and how we can make things much better and more closer to what we had in, in June's journey. And um, obviously, it's much, much harder to um, change a running game and, and not really impact the running game economy um, from live game, um, especially when you have really deep um, game, game economy already. But um, yeah, we managed still to improve the ad monetization quite heavily, and uh, we're really happy about that, um, even though it was not really to that level of what we have seen in June's journey. 
Um, but you can still see like that you can even improve very old games um, which you have run for a while. You can still improve them to a much better level um, if you really understand what you're working on and, and what you're doing there. Got it. Got it. Yeah, no, that, that, that's some amazing insight, sort of, you know, playing both sides, both, you know, the big hits and then also more the evergreen type thing. So, you know, building on that, you know, generally what tactics are you employing in, in something like a June's Journey? you know, to balance ads versus user experience, if, if, if there's anything that, that you do specifically? Actually, it's both really important. Like ad revenue is obviously important for us because we want to make money, um, but the user experience is even more important in most cases. So really what we have done is um, that we decided we want to only work for now with rewarded videos. So no interstitials, no banner, nothing else uh, really disruptive there. So only rewarded videos for now. Um, and then we also have um, as a key aspect, always the user experience. So for example, we always um, give a reward to the player, even if there's no ad available, if the, if the ad provider is failing for some kind of technical issue or so, we always give the reward to the player. If they want to get an ad, they also get it. So there's only a few edge cases where they not get it, like when they cancel an ad or so, then they don't get it because they maybe try to cheat the system or so. But um, if they wanted to get an ad, if they wanted to watch it until the end, um, if anything fails, they still get the reward. So that's really important in our point of view um, because user happiness is much, much more important than the revenue from like a few dozen or hundreds of uh, ad views. Um, so that's really important. And then um, what we also always focus really on is the engagement rate. So what kind of percentage of your DIU is actively watching at least one ad per day? And that's always the first metric we want to increase um, when we have a new game or when we look into an older game, which we want to improve again, we say, what is the engagement rate? Is it like 30, 40%, which is maybe kind of average in the industry for some games, but we orient more like at June journey, what we have achieved there, which is more like 80, 85, 90%, always depending on how much new users you get in, how much you have progress in the game, because in the first few levels of the game you cannot really um, access any ads at all so you really have to um, progress in the game to get the ad placements um, and when you get there you are yeah, basically most of our players are really watching ads every day and yeah. when you achieve that when you achieve like a 70 80 percent of engagement rate then we look into okay how can we get more ads like how can we increase the frequency um, obviously fill rate is important for that so we also have to always keep in mind that we have like a close 100 percent fill rate always so adding enough networks in there, having like a backfill in there, maybe cross motion to other games, et cetera. Um, so there's a few things which you can learn over time, but user experience is really key. And um, as long as um, yeah, you, you're not really sacrificing any kind of big revenue, um, you should always uh, make sure that the, that the user experience is much, much more important and higher priority. Got it, got it. And a very interesting tactics over there you guys employ. It seems like it's a, a big balancing act, but once you sort of get the keys to success, you sort of ride them and, you know, spread them across yeah. all your other titles. Yeah, yeah that that sounds great. Right. Perfect, perfect. Well, you know, let's, let's shift over a little bit. You know, there's been a big shift in industry, as you know, uh, you know, beginning of the year, there's been a lot of talks as, you know, just general industry stuff. Um, specifically for you guys over the last few months, have you seen any changes in performance, you know, across platforms, iOS and Android? since the latest iOS 14 and I guess now 15 adoption has, has increased. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a big topic, right? I mean, everyone talked about it for the last year. Um, hearing about it first time from Apple last year around that time now, then um, trying to understand what's going on, how to prepare, et cetera. So obviously we also tried to prepare as much as possible um, and did a lot of things um, which we thought could really help with that. Um, and in the end, we didn't really see that much of an impact actually on our end. So I also have heard from a few other publishers that maybe Android is going up, iOS is going down, et cetera, like some kind of expected things. But also I heard that, for example, banners have much more impact uh, versus rewarded videos. So on our end, only rewarded videos, um, quite a few preparations before. And so we didn't really see any impact on our end. Um, so I think Apple released it like was it April, May um to all to all users so uh, then q3 kicked in there was some seasonality we have seen across platforms um and now we're getting into q4 um so i can't really say that we saw any concrete impact because of that be it because of our focus on rewarded videos be it because of our preparations can't really say that but i'm fairly happy that we didn't see that big of a drop um like maybe some other publishers have seen yeah, no, that's a great point. Like you mentioned, you know, publishers have been, they have all these horror stories, some, and some like you guys, very, very unaffected. So it's interesting 
uh, the sort of hypotheses and, and theories that you have behind it. Um, and I guess taking a step back a little bit too, maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, the expectations that you had forecasted before prior to, to the latest iOS and then, you know, how things actually turned out uh, both for you guys and then just industry-wide as a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, it was very unclear from the beginning on what was really the impact, right? So it was just that, okay, IDFA is basically gone, but we didn't know it was, if it was gone for like 30%, 50, 80, or 99% of players. Um, that was already one unknown fact. And then also how is the, the industry reacting to that? How are advertisers changing? How are networks changing? The whole, the whole uh, chain, right, of the, of the industry. Um, so I was actually really... Um, not giving any kind of concrete um, uh, 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 estimation internally um, because I said, okay, it's, it's way too unclear what's going on and, and how that's impacting things. And it's actually still ongoing, right? So because, I mean, probabilistic um, targeting is still allowed by Apple, it's kind of tolerated, let's say that, even though it's just kind of fingerprinting as we all know. And um, yeah, so it, it's still running from a few networks and attribution partners. So, I mean, there's a few changes announced from Apple, which are not really in, enforced yet. So it can still happen that it changes and that we're still going to see a much bigger change um, in the next few weeks or months. Um, but that's also why I said, okay, I cannot really give an exact estimation or, or any kind of number on that. Um, but I just said, hey, just prepare for a drop and then let's see how much we can uh, prepare and then buffer. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's the one thing about all of this. It's just been so uncertain, especially this year too. Um, and, you know, you mentioned preparing for things. Have there been any sort of specific actions or strategies that, that you've used to sort of mitigate, you know, the impact? Um, I know you mentioned really been unaffected, but if there's anything particular that you could talk about yeah, that, that yeah. you notice has been working? Yeah. I mean, what I mentioned also in the beginning, right, the communication, the kind of understanding of the market and the industry, I, I think was also key here to just be connected to other publishers, to networks, and just to understand what people talk about, what they, how they interpret also the news from Apple, just, just understand what should we prepare for, what should we kind of um, design our pop-ups for, etc. like really understand how, what's the best practice in the industry, and then uh, also applying the learnings uh, internally to our games, but then also um, applying these kind of learnings. So updating SDKs, um, adding the SK ad network IDs into the uh, plist on the, on the, on the um, apps, on, on the ice apps. Um, we also added more networks in the waterfall because we said, okay, if some networks are going down, maybe it's better to increase the competition in the waterfall. Um, I had an, uh, I mean, I also had before, but I still had an ongoing focus on bidding um, because I said, okay, um, bidding is still going to work as a principle and it's supposed to improve things. So let's keep on focusing on bidding and, and push our partners to um, uh, uh, activate bidding, uh, yeah, improve it for, for, for us as a publisher. Um, and then, yeah, updating SDK versions. Not sure if I mentioned that. Um, and uh, yeah, so a few things. Um, then the then the pop up itself. Like we, I mean, obviously you have the ATT pop up from Apple, but then you can also show like a preparation pop up in the before and in advance um, to just prepare the players for it. Um, so we also had to understand what kind of um, design can we take. Should we take more like a neutral design? Should we take like a game focused design. So that's a few tests we have been running actually beforehand, um, which we learned from and then which we also applied um, to our games and said, okay, should be more like a game focused design, should be really this kind of design with a close button or not, with a wording, etc. We also got rejected actually a few times in the beginning when we said, wow. okay, we're going to try it this way. And then we got rejected because of a few um, little aspects in there. But that's all things we, we were prepared for and we knew, okay, um, we can do it maybe like this, but maybe not. But if we get rejected, we should really act quickly on it. Um, so really understanding what's, what can we do, what can happen, and then if the worst case happened, what can we do about that? Right. And this worked out in the end. So we're live, we're still live, <laughs> uh, it's running. And, uh, yeah, it's there you go. Process. Yeah, no, that's some amazing insight too. It's, it's great to hear sort of that behind the scenes stuff that, you know, not everybody really knows about, you know, all this test testing and all this playing around and making sure things work, what doesn't work. And that, that's, that's some great insight. Um, and a point that you, you drew upon there too um, is bidding, which I love that you brought up. You know, that's also keeping things within industry trends. It seems like a large number of publishers uh, have moved over or are testing bidding solutions now. Um, so you, you touched on a little bit, but are you using bidders? And if so, you know, what's your experience been like with the tech, with performance, how, how things been looking as a whole? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm definitely a big fan of bidding since that whole idea came up and since the first networks experience with that. Um, and I've tried actually now, I think I'm on the third mediation doing bidding. Um, so I've, I've got a few insights already, a um, few networks, how they do it differently, etc. cetera. Um, and I still believe into bidding as a concept and I still think it's a good idea and it's the only future going forward for mobile internet uh, advertising. Um, but it's also not the holy grail. So yes, it's much more efficient um, to not deal so much with waterfall management. It's much more efficient also on the technical side, but it's also a big change for the networks. It's, it's a big change for the advertisers building into your traffic to understanding maybe new data points, a different kind of technical flow, etc. So there's new aspects, there's new um, possibilities of failure. So um, it's definitely not like, yeah, just let's turn it on and then everything is perfectly fi working fine and we're making much more revenues. Um, but I also understand that um, it's tricky for the mediations, it's tricky for the networks, it's tricky for the advertisers. So there's a lot of um, different um, companies out there still trying to um, work on it, integrate a bidder on there and improving it, understanding how they can compete with that bidder against other networks in the waterfall. Um, and I wouldn't say that um, dedicatedly like the, the, the bidders are much better than the waterfall networks. Um, but I think it creates a better positioning for them that they can have more access to more traffic, they can um, optimize better. So, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say, let's say, just because one network is moving from waterfall to bidding, um, that suddenly it might make much more revenues for you, um, but they're in a better position um, to optimize. So, um, yeah, bidding is a, is a great topic. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's that's some amazing feedback that you gave. You know, I think there's a common misconception like, Yes, it is new, um, but you know th there's also legacy things that have been working. So I think the biggest piece of advice for you know a lot of people online to take back is just really, you know, use a system that you that works for you. Test a few things, you know, turn things on and off, um, and, and sort of see how things go. And you know, that's again, that's great insight. Um, I think trying to tie things all together here. Is there anything that you're excited about? Um, I know you mentioned bidding is, is something that you've been testing frequently. Is there any sort of efficiencies or other day to day processes that you're starting to employ and anything that you're excited about? Mm, I think it's really mainly about the bidding point, uh, which we already talked about, um, yeah. which can change a lot of things, right? So um, in, the, in the managing of the waterfall, of the whole ad integration, we can also, it can also change the way we work with partners. So maybe some partners were really inefficient before and they were not really working so well in the waterfall and suddenly they become much better. It can also happen, um, but I think it's still in a, in a very um, changing situation right now. So there's a lot of networks who just got on bidding. They're still experiencing things, how it's different and they're learning from it and improving. Some are just about to um, work on it internally and about, about to test it. Some are already live with bidding for like two years or so, but they're still um, able to learn things and improve. So I think it's, it's actually much slower than on desktop side where we have seen like a more rapid change um, a while ago. Um, but on mobile, it's, I think, um, also a very, very important change, but it just takes a much longer time. So um, other than that, I mean, we have seen a great uh, session with you before from the Facebook guys, Antonio um, and his colleague. Um, so rewarder videos, obviously, is uh, the go-to format for your games. We keep on doing that. Um, I think there's also nice new ad format coming out with like in-play ads. So, like the, it's not really any any kind of standardized uh, name, I would say it for the format for like you know, fully in-world ads, which are really interesting to us as well uh, going forward because they're also not really disruptive and also interesting uh, movements there as a new ad format. Um, so also something to uh, monitor, I would say. But other than that, um, yeah, I mean, there's always challenges, right? So we have seen the challenge of iOS 14. Now we're looking to iOS 15, which seems to not be so disruptive again. Um, but there's also like any kind of legislations from countries or organizations which are like similar to GDPR or CCPA. There's more legislations coming up from other countries like Brazil and other areas. So there's always things you have to be aware of, which you have to um, look into with your colleagues, maybe from legal team to always see, okay, what are challenges you have to overcome and prepare for them as much as possible. Right, right. Amazing. Yeah, no, that's, that's again, more great insight, you know, and forward looking to, it seems like there's a lot on the horizon and just staying on top of things and making sure, you know, you're ready for, for the changes that come. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we're wrapping up here. Um, Jan, again, thanks for, thanks for being here. Last question I have for you um, is, you know, what can we expect from you forward looking, you know, from Wuga in the next six to 12 months? I know you, 
you teased at a new title, but is there anything beyond that? Maybe you could talk a little bit more about it and, uh, you know, anything else you have on the horizon? Yeah, yeah. So I mentioned already beforehand, um, when I talked about June Journey as our last uh, title release, um, we actually have two more titles in the making right now. One of them is very, very um, in the final stage. So we're going to release it before the end of the year. Really happy about that. It's super exciting for all of us internally. We can really not wait for it. And looking forward for hopefully having really good success with that. Um, the other game will take a bit longer and I cannot talk that much more about it, but I'm really excited about that um, first new game coming up. I can already say a name because already, it's already on the stores. It's, uh, the name is Switchcraft. Um, it's about a kind of uh, witches theme on an academy and then having some crime again. And, and it's, it's very typical for, uh, for Vuga again, very story driven. So be, it's, a, it's a match three game and you're going to have like a very complex and a nice story again. You can uh, play long and um, just find out what's going on in that uh, universe. So uh, watch out for it uh, for the launch. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that's a great way to close out. We leave it at that. Uh, thank you, Jan, for, for being on here. Um, be on the lookout for Switchcraft as well. And Peggy, yeah. I see you jump back on. So if there are any yeah, questions. Yeah, because we're not going to let you guys go that easily. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now we have some questions and we do have a green light to go ahead with some of them. So why not? Uh, because Jan, I mean, your colleagues are right. It's uh, great hearing you talk about monetization. Great tips. And I think that's why so many in the audience just want some tips right? I've got one here. What is a common mistake first timers often make when looking to monetize their free to play game? And what can they, what have you learned from your common mistakes? So they want to understand your first mistake and what are the common mistakes maybe to avoid out there? So we're going to go into your bio, <laughs> deep into your oh. biography. <laughs> yeah. Well, first time mistakes. Um, I think what we have seen also before from the other talk from the Facebook guys, um, it's important to understand your type of game. Is it like a hyper casual game, hardcore game, et cetera? What kind of ad format uh, does suit your kind of, your type of game? Um, and then, I mean, I think rewarded videos is a good fit for most of the games, um, but then you also have to figure out, okay, is it a good idea to try out with banners, with interstitials, native ads, et cetera? Um, but I think with rewarded videos, you can't make that much wrong. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of standard nowadays to work with a mediation partner. There's a few out there, um, like a four or five really big ones. Um, and that, yeah, I think any of them should be good for like a, for a start. All of them are pretty good. Um, I, I think I can just name, mention a few names. So we have AdMob, we have Mopop, we have um, Super uh, Iron Source um, with the mediation. We have uh, Max from AppLove and we have also Fiber. So I see these kind of four or five as, um, really good mediations out there. Um, so just take any of them, try it out. And then definitely um, like a three to five networks um, from the beginning on. So don't just start with one network that can always mean low fail rates, um, low ECPMs, but really have at least some competition from the beginning on. And then you can uh, take it further from there. So if you start with like three to five networks and then you can see um, how your data looking like. And of course you're big on uh, bidding. And uh, some questions around just the, the, the nuts and bolts of that. It seems that there's uh, quite a lot of education and relationship building. It's not just saying, hey, I want to do it because, you know, I have access to more traffic and I have access potentially to more money. There's a downside to that. You said it's tricky. Some people are wanting to understand what you mean by tricky. So tell me how tricky it is to work with a bidding platform. I mean, I would say it's not super tricky as a publisher. So I would say mm. from my point of view, it's just um, this kind of the same SDK from the network. It's the same kind of dashboard. So it's not really that more, much more tricky from a publisher or from a developer point of view, but it's, I think, more from the demand side, which has a different way of um, bidding into your traffic. They have to change their model from maybe a CPI to a CPM model internally. They have to change the optimization algorithms. They have to change the way um, how the ads are requested or how they're cached on the, on the technical level on the client. Um, maybe depending on your mediation partner, if you have your own in-house mediation also, you have to also change that mediation. Um, so there's a few things um, which you have to be aware of. Um, but I would say if you have one of these five uh, mediation partners I mentioned already, um, all of them support some networks in a, in a bidding environment. Um, it shouldn't be any different as a publisher, I would say. But just as the industry as a whole, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated process to move forward. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. So a last question, because you're talking about the differences between the platforms. Somebody wants to understand the differences between 
um, different ads working in different markets? Maybe that's a little bit more of a regional question for you. So do you have insights on any trends towards different ads working more effectively in different markets? Um, with different ads, I guess. Uh, the, I guess I mean um, ad formats. Yeah, I mean, you know, ad like, formats. You know, where yeah, it is so playable and, and yeah, and I mean we have only rewarded videos, um, so I cannot really speak much about um, how they differ towards interstitials or banners or playables or anything like that. So I don't have any experience on that. Um, I mean, I'm I'm for a while already at Vuga, but we have always focused on rewarded videos. So I think it's probably better to some other um, yeah companies out there. And here I would also give the advice again, communication, talk to your mediation partner, and especially, uh, especially mediation um, companies, they should have really good access to a lot of data from different ad formats, different markets, different publishers, um, to try to talk to a contact you have at a mediation company um, and try to gather some data and insights from them. Um, and they should be able to give you some benchmarks um, on these type of differences, if there's okay. any. Well, it's been a great talk and you did a great job as a moderator as well, Dylan, because I will leave you with a question. You don't have to answer it because I think this is one you might want to take off offline is, uh, do you do consulting and advice? <laughs> um, I'm usually happy to talk to other publishers and also happy to share kind of insights and, and uh, talk with uh, like-minded um, people. Um, is it really more like an, a consulting approach it may be different i mean i'm having like a full-time job at vuga um but yeah let's just connect offline i'm happy to give my uh, context i can also just answer directly in the q a i think mm -hmm. um so um yeah people can yeah, also please do it left it. left an impression somebody wants you to have a side hustle yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can see it yeah, yeah, I can do that. but uh, always usually happy to help and I also try to help our um, network partners, like the, the, the ad providers, with some product feedback, usually. Um, so we're having sessions with that. So I definitely see that also as part of my job to help other people in the industry um, to make a better job and that just raising all of our uh, positioning as, a, as an industry. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed it because, again, I'm the one who's the analyst and the author and not the marketer here. And if I get it, then it's it's really good. And I've learned a lot. So I really have to thank you both for such an informative and entertaining fireside chat. Thanks again. Thank you. Peggy. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Bye.